It's now been four months since it was announced that gaming peripheral and parts manufacturer Corsair was intent on obtaining Fanatec from Indoor AG. Corsair, having already acquired Drop, um, Origin, Scuff, and Elgato, is no stranger to acquisitions. But in this case, the German Strarug law created some unnecessary hurdles in the transaction, which slowed it and eventually stopped the agreement under their original plan to purchase. Now, I've said before, I think this was a wise decision for Corsair by taking the step back and allowing Fanatec to file bankruptcy. They're able to come back in and scoop them up without all the different strings that were attached previously. Coming out of the pandemic, Corsair has become very reliant on peripheral sales. During the pandemic, PC builds doubled, therefore parts needed to build PCs were in high demand. Corsair was riding high on you know, sales of you know, memory, fans, water coolers, all the different components of a PC build that they can provide. Now being on the backside of that and with less PCs being built, they're reliant on the release of new GPUs and CPUs to drive that part of the business to get those builds going again. And that doesn't happen all year round. You get those big releases one time a year. So that means they could potentially have one big quarter per year. So the first half's revenue this year is down from last year and they're, they're feeling that pain. So some of you might be wondering how this is relevant to Fanatec specifically. While PC parts sales have been the primary driver for revenue for Corsair for many years, they're still wanting to see that same revenue that they saw during during the pandemic time period. And they're seeing significant growth in the peripheral area. And what that does with Fanatec is it offers them an opportunity to get into a different niche market and grow that market and be able to provide you know new peripherals, bring out new items. And when you think about sim racing, you're not just talking about like, you know, oh, I bought a wheel this week and some pedals and I'm done shopping especially with Fanatec, like there's so many options for wheelbases. You got to, you know, QR, the quick release attachments. Um, like there's so many components of sim racing that if they can get as many of those under their belts as well, that's a whole new driver in their peripheral side to help grow their revenue and offset the losses from PCs not being built. So huge upside there for them. What about for Fanatec? How does Corsair's acquisition of Fanatec help us and help that company? If you go visit the Fanatec website right now, what you're going to see is that there's a letter on there now from the CEO and founder of Corsair, Andy Paul. And if you read the letter, you can see that he's really done his homework. Basically, he knows what specifically has created trust issues from us, the consumers, with Fanatec. And those are the first things he wants to focus on. So basically customer service, speed of delivery, the warranty issues, and the software issues. Those are the three things he's cited as his initial focus taking over the company. And of course, those are the three biggest things that a majority of those of us who use Fanatec or have been interested in Fanatec are concerned about. He did also emphasize that Corsair has a much larger supply chain and access to that supply to supply chains all over the world, as well as distributors all over the world. So being able to get products around the world faster, having quicker access to them, being able to get them from, you know, different companies that they have partnerships with rather than having to order from Fanatec directly will all impact the availability of the product. Could even, let, let's be honest, like realistically it should impact the price a little bit. It should actually help it. But at the same time, we don't really want to see Fanatec's quality get degraded or anybody looking for like any cheaper products than we're already getting with like CSL and stuff. What I would rather see personally is a better quality product. And if the pricing doesn't change or it goes up a little bit for something even better, I, I've made peace with that. Like I'm okay with that. But in this case, it's kind of a mixture. Now, they have said they are going to keep the headquarters in Germany, and I don't think that there's any major changes taking place with research and development or anything like that initially, um, but they are going to continue to develop hardware, and obviously, it wouldn't have been a good investment for the company if they didn't want to see that return quickly. And honestly, that's, that's what I'm um, more interested to find out is how this will impact the speed of new development and how quickly the new releases, like, will it improve the process of releasing new equipment? 
So recently we know the CSL and the club sport both got a revamp, both went to direct drive. And now we have the podium line that we're all eagerly waiting to find out what's going to happen with. As far as, you know, pedals go, which I think we would all agree is a pretty significant piece of sim racing hardware. We have, you know, force feedback and stuff coming into, you know, SimuCube and um, even uh, I think Moza's working on one that's about to be released. And with all that, you got to wonder, like, what is Fanatec's next step with, step with pedals? Because we definitely need an upgrade there. And lastly, and definitely least importantly, because we're not using them as much, but we haven't really seen any upgrades in shifters or handbrakes in quite some time. With Corsair now at the helm, I think the ability for this company to achieve even higher levels is much better. Um, I've said it before, and I'm happy to say it again. I don't think we've seen Fanatec at the top level again in a while, but I truly believe that they have all the potential and all the resources now to be able to achieve that again. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see what the next couple of years look like with Fanatec and how... I think we might see some rapid growth here that isn't taking place, or at least some rapid releases of new equipment as they, you know, bring in more people to focus on developing the brand. And I think they initially we may not see that like right out the gate because the first step is to regain the trust of the consumer. But ultimately, I'm really excited about this acquisition. And I think it's going to be a really good thing for the company and a really good thing for us as consumers. Now, before I go, I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys again for all of your support. Uh, we're only a handful of subscribers away from meeting my initial goal. Assuming the trend continues, we should be able to hit a thousand by the end of this month or early next month. And to be honest with you, when I started the channel, that was kind of my initial first goal was to hit a thousand. And it's been a few years. So I'm grateful to those of you that have been with us through the beginning. Um, for those of you that have joined recently. If you haven't joined and you do subscribe, I'm grateful for that as well. So thank you guys and I'll see you on the next video.